Um, uh, hello from my behalf as well. Uh, my name is Yuri, Yuri Tironiemi, and I work at the Finnish Environmental Institute as a researcher. I mainly work with the microplastics in Roskasaki, which is our uh, research group. Our logo is here. And today I'm going to talk about the citizen science with Ruffe, which we already heard, heard uh, a bit. And then I'm going to go more generally in citizen science, what it is and what kind of examples we can find or how to participate. So, just a bit of a recap, but we already heard about the trip Ruffetuk, but Ruffe took seven samples around the Baltic Sea, and uh, he took them with the with the Manta troll or the baby Manta troll, which is a smaller version of the bigger bigger one we use at the at Aranda. And uh, he pulled the Manta troll behind uh, his boat around one and a half kilometers, and after that it was lifted back on board, and the cot pieces or the sample bags were then uh, stored and brought to us in the lab. And here in the picture below, you can see the samples, how they looked. They, be a, they can be a bit tiny, but there's a, a lot of variation in the samples, like samples four and six, for example, are really clear. clear. There's not much algae or there's not much plants, but like the first two are so full of macroalgae. So we had to do something in order to see the microplastics. And for that, we use the multi-step enzymatic treatment. Here is the flow chart for that. It might say not so much for you, but there's like a enzymatic treatment, which is really good for all microplastics because it doesn't hurt them or like the destroy them. And then some common like hydro hydrogen peroxide, peroxide, which is very common in uh, household cleaning products as well. And in the next picture, you can see how it affects the, the samples. So uh, little by little, it's removing all the other material from the sample and only the plastics are left there. So what did we find? We already saw some pictures, but here are some uh, sample pictures. So we found a lot of, lot of uh, plastics. All of these in the, um, in the uh, bottom part of the picture are microplastics. There's some kind of a uh, rope, and white particles, green particles, and uh, membranes. A lot of different kind of uh, plastics, and we used uh, forceps, needle, and hot needle to recognize the plastics. Plastics from the other material that is still there, because we cannot remove everything. That's almost impossible. There was also a lot of fibers. Most of them were clear or white, so usually we would guess they were like um, from a fishing line or a fishing nets. But there were also these really colorful uh, long fibers, which we believe to be from uh, ropes used in, in boats and in towing the, the manta troll. And uh, we usually show the pictures where the microplastics are really clear color, like they like green, red, and blue, but that's not actually the case, usually. They're usually white or clear or opaque, so it's really difficult to spot them if you don't remove the other material. And usually they're like more like these. And here's the results from the study. So the highest, here is the pieces by cubic meter on this axle. And we can see that the highest number was found from Orland Sea. It was 2.3 pieces of plastic or microplastics in a cubic meter of water. And what else you can also see that the fibers are marked with the gray color and the particles are with the black color. You can see that in almost in every sample locations, fibers were far away uh, more common than the particles. 
And this is uh, common in every other studies as well. Usually fibers are outnumbering the particles. And, and uh, especially with the particles, it seems that the, the smaller you go, the more you fi find them. And this is common as well in other studies that the smaller you go, like the numbers go up really fast. Like if you look at the black black bar, which are the particles, you can see it rises quite steeply in the end. With the with fibers, it's not as clear. And uh, here is um, results from other studies, so you can compare our results. Our results were. Uh, 2.3 was the highest number, but and if we want to look the Gulf of Finland, for example, the lowest part, we can see it actually quite nicely fits into the into those uh, other results. So our lowest was 0 0.5, and the highest was 2.3. So they're in the range, in the same range as the other studies made. And for us, I think it tells that the city science worked very well. The results are in, the, in, in line with other, other studies, so citizen science is really working. Um, then more generally about citizen science. Uh, what is citizen science? Uh, it's public participation and collaboration in scientific research. And it's really good for tackling some of the problems in, in science such as resources. If you need like a thousand people to do some study, you may not be able to hire all of them. It would be just too costly. Or if you don't, if you have to do a lot of sampling at the same time in a, in a wide variety of places, then you may not have enough personnel to do that. Or if you want to do really wide geographical um, mapping of something, then citizen science can be a really good help for that. And uh, what is gained from the citizen science is knowledge, of course, in, in terms of data. But I think the one, like the more important thing is the awareness, which is increased. Because when people get aware of things, they usually want to make them better or act on them. So increased awareness is the, I guess, the higher goal in citizen science in a way. And uh, what is needed is a really good measurement protocol. So we know how the samples were taken and that they were treated the same way and uh, sufficient data quality uh, assurance is, is really important, but that's for the scientists to think about when they, when they use citizen science. And really good examples of citizen science, which not many even think, is, think about is bird monitoring and astronomy, which, are go which have been going on for hundreds of years already. So citizen science is not a new thing, just got a new name. And uh, when I was asking about the citizen science, I delved into it. And I found a bunch of articles. If you want to go online and Google citizen science, you'll find uh, the hundreds of uh, scientific articles about it, about it. And especially this one article uh, struck my eye because it was about the beach litter monitoring, which was done here today, earlier by Vidasaris to Sistine. And the outcome of the study was that citizen science is really high quality, that it compares very well to the work made by, made by the uh, scientist. And actually, without citizen science, our understanding about beach litter wouldn't be as comprehensive because we just wouldn't have enough people people to do that. Like in case of Pida uh, Saaristo Sistina, they have done it since 2012, three times a year, in uh, I think 13 or 14 beaches. We would never have personnel to do that so often. And. Uh, here is a graph from uh, beach litter monitoring data from Finland from 2012 to 2018. And 
the main finding, or one of the main findings, is that cigarette butts or tupacan tumbit is the main litter item found on these beaches. And actually, nine, almost 90% of the litter found is some form of plastic. Cigarette butts is included in, in plastic because there is plastic parts in it. And in, in, in more natural beaches, that was, it, that was the situation with the urban beaches. But then the natural beaches, it's plastic items that has been floating, floating in there by currents and uh, waves and wind. And if you want to read more about this, then you can go online and find this uh, publication. Suomen meriala eroskantumis lähteet. It came out earlier this spring, so it's really, really new information. And then I'm going to talk about a bit about Itämeri Pistefi. I don't know if you have visited it already, but if you haven't, you should, because there is so much uh, information about Itämeri. There is uh, live data, pictures, videos, teaching material, and there's also section for citizen science if you're interested in doing citizen science then this is the place to go and this is not all that you can find there this is only partially what you can do in the citizen science section or consolidate okay. the section but you can uh, report your observation about ice coverage Sekitep. Uh, blue green algae, water temperature, water weed sightings, which is uh, Canada Vesirutto, which is an alien species. Uh, litter, which is our topic, and jellyfishes, porpoises, uh, alien species, and bladderwrack, which we heard, already heard is a really good indicator species for the state of the Baltic Sea. And uh, if you want to want more than Ümberistöpistefi slash Kansalais Havainot, you can report ghost nets. This is really important to us because we really don't know how many ghost nets there are already uh, there are in the sea. And we would really like to know. If you find any, please inform them in Kansalais Havainot section of Ümberistöpistefi. Really, ne really need that information. Then you can also inform snowmen, which is an uh, indicator of the snow, but it, like a more funny, funner, funnier way to do that. And uh, there's so much more, but I just kind of go through all of it, like winter, winter sightings of uh, specific birds and seals and so on. And then uh, one quite a new thing is the bird pellets which is Oxenus pallo in Finnish, because our research professor found, Maju Lehtiniemi, uh, found uh, plastic in it when she was in the archipelago in the island. So, and that started this whole thing that we want to know, know more, how much we have those plastic pellets in the invert, uh, no, plastic invert pellets. So if you find any Bird pellets, please look <laughs> into them if there is any plas plastic in them. And then, of course, you can uh, uh, tell your observation about winter sighting of mammals, in specific mammals, and birds to bird life. And then I wanted to introduce this app. I don't know if you have used it already, iNaturalist which is a really great app for learning more about the species in nature because it has a built-in function to recognize a species. So you can just take a picture of a butterfly, for example, and it tells you which butterfly it is, and usually it's actually correct one. And, but if it's not, then you just can submit that finding into the, into the app, and then somebody else will tell you who knows those butterflies that which butterfly it is. And if you're not fond, with, uh, fond of apps, then you can go to laipi.fi like to report your observation of species. And one oldie but goldie, we, all, we all are interested about weather. 
So in uh, Finnish Meteorological Institute or Ilmatiete Laitos weather app, there is the citizen science section. If you haven't noticed, <laughs> I, I haven't. <laughs> so you can uh, tell about your observations. There is temperature, floods, rains, snow, everything like that. And that's that all the data is used. So the Finnish Meteorological Institute uses all of the, uh, the findings you do to to make the, their um, observations better or their calculations better. That's, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. This was really fantastic presentation of citizen science projects and, and really great that you have these websites, itameri.fi and umparista.fi and also the rest of the sites where you can very easily contribute to, to these scientific programs by delivering information about your own observations in your environment. And I think that also these citizen science projects are, they really help us somehow to reconnect or redefine or update our relationship to our environment. Because then we are really studying it. We also learn a lot while participating. So I'm very grateful that you could also contribute to this event. Thanks Thank you. a lot. And the next um, next program is um, is the competition that we launched in June. Ihme meriteko. I think we take this in Finnish. Uh, um, eli ihme meriteko oli yleisökilpailu, johon saattoi instassa, Instagramissa osallistua omalla kuvallaan siitä teosta, jo, jolla osallistuu Itämeren suojeluun. Ja meillä, oli, meillä oli tosi ilo, että Seppo Knuuttila asiantuntijana suostui ää, valitsemaan palkinnon saajan. Ja me voitaisiin nyt oikeastaan kuulla sitä Seppoa, että mitä ajatuksia hänellä tuli, tuli ja miksi hän valitsi voittajan, jonka myös kuulemme tässä pian. Ole hyvä. Vai otatko puhdista Desinfioimme mikit, ettei korona tarttu, jos meillä sitä sattuu olemaan. Ole hyvä, Seppo. <köhön> Joo, siellä oli tosi hyviä ehdotuksia. Kaikki oli oikeastaan mun mielestä Itämeren kannalta hyviä tekoja. Siellä oli äh, monta äh, ruokavalioon liittyvää asiaa. Siellä oli järvikalapihvejä. Äh, sitten siellä oli oman maan perunoita, joka on... Siis kasvisruokana tosi ympäristöystävällinen. Sitten siellä oli pyöräily. Se on tärkeä valinta, jos me ajatellaan ilmastonmuutoksen hillitsemistä, mitä enemmän käyttää, käyttää niin kuin omaa lihasvoimaa tai sitten julkisia kulkuneuvoja. Niin, niin se vähentää omia ilmastopäästöjä ja se vaikuttaa myös omaan ravinnon jalanjälkeen, koska, koska fossiilisia polttoaineita käyttävillä kulkuneuvoilla aiheuttaa tyyppipäästöjä, jotka sitten osittain rehevöittää Itämertä. Mutta valitsin sitten sieltä semmoisen kohteen, jossa, jossa yhdistyi mun mielestä monta hyvää asiaa. Siinä oltiin ensinnäkin valmistamassa ruokaa itse ongituista särjistä. Ja noista kala, kalaruokavaliosta ja sen positiivisista vaikutuksista omaa ravinnon jälkeen mä puhuin tuossa aikaisemmin. Ja, ja Tämä kalalaji, särki, oli erittäin hyvä siinä mielessä, että se on ollut meillä Suomessa pitkään väheksytty kalalaji, jota ei ole, sitä on kutsuttu roskakalaksi. Ja nyt ihan viime vuosina on, meillä on alkanut tulla hyviä särkituotteita, ja särjen maine on, on kasvussa, ja meillä olisi iso potentiaali kalastaa enemmän särkeä ja tehdä hyviä särkiruokia. Ja sitten siinä oli yhdisty vielä hyvä elementti se, että oltiin itse ongella, merellä, jossa, jossa niin kuin tavallaan koetaan itse samalla se, se hieno meriympäristö ja, ja se tämmöinen positiivinen, äh, hyvää mieltä tuova asia, mitä se meri itsessään meille tarjoaa ja se, että samalla pystytään siellä itse hankkimaan 
sekä terveellistä että Itämeren kannalta hyvää ruokaa. Tämä on mun mielestä palkitsemisen arvoinen meriteko. Kiitos. Kiitos Seppo. Erittäin hyvä valinta. Ja tämä voittaja, voittaja on Instagramissa nimellä Riimi Runo. Ja mä tavoitin hänet eilen. Hän on henkilö nimeltään Riia Huovinen, joka asuu täällä Helsingissä. Mutta oli matkalla Lahteen urheilukilpailuihin eikä päässyt tänne paikan päälle. Mutta hän oli valtavan iloinen tästä, tästä palkituksi tulemisestaan. Ja meillähän oli tässä palkintona Itämeri Illallinen. Ja, ja sen voi sitten he, hän ystävänsä kanssa nauttia ravintola nollassa joka tunnetusti käyttää ainoastaan lähiruoka, lähi, läheltä tuotettua ruokaa ja sitten myös sesongin mukaista ruokaa ja toimii hyvin pitkälle kiertotalouden ajatuksen mukaisesti, eli he käyttävät hyvin tarkkaan kaikki ruoka-aineensa. Ja minusta tässä teki mieli vielä tästä Jyrin esityksestä sanoa, että nämä teot voivat olla tosiaan hyvin pieniä ja ne voi tuottaa tosi paljon myös iloa. Ja jos ajatellaan vaikka niitä tupakan tumppeja, että jos se on niin se suurin Määr, tai niin kuin se määrä, se roska, jota löytyy eniten, niin tupakoitsijat voisivat kyllä miettiä tässä kohtaa, että voisiko sen tupakan tumpin sitten viedä jonnekin ihan asianmukaiseen roskikseen sen sijaan, että, että jättää sen sinne rannalle. Mutta sitten meillä oli vielä kolme muuta, me palkitsemme vielä kolme, kolme muuta kilpailijaa. Mä voin täältä ottaa vapun laatikosta. Eli meillä on kolme Jana Winderenin CD-levyä myös palkintoina tähän kilpailuun. Ja sellainen Instagram-käyttäjä kuin sisukas.xo on nyt voittanut Jana Winderenin CD-levyn. Ja se on siis taideteos, koska se on hänen yksi tapa, millä tavalla hän saa omat, oman tuotantonsa näkyviin. Hän tekee siis konsertteja, installaatioita. Radio-ohjelmiakin ja, ja näitä CD-levyjä, se on, nämä on ehkä ne yleisimmät ä, muodot, missä hänen taiteensa ä, manifestoituu. Ja sitten meillä oli vielä kaksi. Otetaan ne saman tien täältä. Eli Instagram-käyttäjä nimeltään Marushoo, M-A-R-U-S-H-O-O, on voittanut toisen levyn ja viimeisen. <tos> Voittaa Instagram-käyttäjä nimeltään Lady Who. Onneksi olkoon kaikille voittajille. Otamme heihin yhteyttä, yhteyttä myöhemmin. And now we should connect with Jana again. I think she would like to reflect on what, what she has heard. And certainly we would like to very much thank you both the audience and our speakers. Okay, Jana, can you hear us? Hello. Hello, Jana. Hello, can you hear can, me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, can okay. you hear us? I, I lost your image. I can't see you, but uh, I can hear you. So. Okay. So great. that's okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's been great to follow. And uh, yeah, thank you all for brilliant. Uh, I'm sorry that I don't understand Finnish, even though I am one eight Finnish. <laughs> I've not learned language from my ancestors. So yeah, it was super great. And thank you all so much. Yes, we are very happy. We have. I feel like we have traveled quite a yeah. long way from the Baltic Sea through all the water systems, through the whole whole world almost. And and it was really fantastic also that most of the speakers also made the connection with global trade and and all these invisible connections all around the world in the decisions that we make as consumers yeah. and and when we choose what we eat and and so on. Mm. So. We are pleased, don't you think? <laughs> yes, no, it's super great. And uh, yeah, so much looking forward to keep working with yes. you all. Yeah, it's great. So hmm. And we will continue our research with Jana and we will share all the information on our website. So we hope you will follow, follow us. And we 
definitely very warmly want to welcome all of you here next year uh, to see the installation, the sound installation that Diana is, is making there. And it will be in August at the same time like now. And um, now we are still have the sta rowing stadium open if you would like to visit, if you didn't have the time to do that yet. And um, at three o'clock we will close the gate. So happy to have you here. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy and see you next year. Yes, looking forward to see you next year. Super great. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Jana. It was great we could create this connection. Yes, super. We'll be in contact. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.